Second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle was written in the third chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the eighth verse. Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him, seek, let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon thy servants, O Lord God of hosts. Hear the prayers of thy servants. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The king shall rejoice in thy strength, O Lord. Seeing glad shall he be of thy salvation. Hallelujah. Behold, O oh God, our defender, and look upon thy servants. O oh Lord God of hosts, hear the prayer of thy servants.
Holy Gospel is written in the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. God and his Father before all worlds, God, God, light, light, very God, very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things live, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Mother Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits on the right hand of God. And he shall come again for glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified. Who spake by the prophets? And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, that I look the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. Okay, welcome everybody today, and those of you who are online, thanks for coming, thanks for being here. Uh, should give you fair warning that we're practicing civil disobedience this morning. Little bitty, we're actually very safe. I mean, you're so sp spread out in the church that there's no possibility of you doing anything wrong. If you wish to wear a mask, you can. In any case, you're able to sing, but there's a new dictum from our government that says singing is somehow bad for you. So we're probably not going to listen to that. So, um, 
because they're they're out of their depth. That's okay. Anyway, happy to have you here. Happy to have you singing this morning and uh, praising God. Alrighty, we are on Zoom as well as on in live person, and also this service is recorded so we can put it out there um, on YouTube later, and you can watch it anytime you want to and find out what mistakes we've made so far and be able to prove it. Like this is exhibit A for, well, never mind. Anyhow, health guidelines, we are putting our collection base in there for you to drop your uh, collections there. Uh, the masks are available and are at your option. You can use them and drop them off in that um, jar back there. We'll, we'll launder them for you and provide them again and again, uh, or they, free ones that are out front that you I uh, very good okay uh, the ones that are outside there are the paper ones are for one-time use you can take those and use them and I'm happy to have that here entry of course is one door exit the other door and we'll meet downstairs after the service and greet below uh, the synod is here on September the 22nd through the 26th this year it is Planning to go ahead, uh, barring some other incident that makes it impossible to do, we'll go ahead with this. It's an important set of meetings that we have already moved away from May. Um, it is planned to have the election of the new suffragan bishop to be here uh, the morning of February, not February, Friday morning, the 25th. Uh, the new suffragan bishop is Robert Ponick from Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, he will take my place as I am moved into the second spot, which means uh, suffragan bishop or, uh, becomes the coadjutor bishop. And that means I, I wouldn't have to be elected again to take over the top spot should it be vacated. That's just all to say that all the bishops from the province will be here that Friday and will be part of the, the consecration that afternoon. Uh, that's something I learned this week, so it's news to me. And so it's news to you. Our Anglican church women are still seeking donors for the women's resource clinic. We have enough anytime, but we also have, we have plenty of room to give more. That's a great work locally. And thank you for the contributions you've made already. And our old prayer books and hymnals are yours to keep and to bring. Uh, all you gotta do is pay five bucks. It's there. We got them in the back. We can get them for you and happy to do that for you there. Vestry meets today at about 12.30, and that's an online meeting, a Zoomy meeting uh, of Vestry, so Vestry men knows that. I have no further announcements, so let's sing hymn 304.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draft. Yesterday, SpaceX canceled the launch of its Falcon 9 rocket. Some further checks were needed, it seems, before sending the latest of the Starlink satellite fleet into orbit. Space travel, even manned space travel, has almost become an everyday thing once again. Again, that sounds funny, but SpaceX, a private company, has sent and returned spacecraft from Earth orbit, sent its Dragon spacecraft delivering cargo to and from the International Space Station. What only NASA could have performed 50 years ago is now in the private sector. And once again, the thrill of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, liftoff, is with us again. Once again. I grew up in the era of space. Humans had never escaped the atmosphere. Not until Sputnik became a fearful headline for us, our chiefest rival, for world dominion was the Soviet Union, a communist government, an alliance that was outspoken in its aggressive stance to force a one world government, and that would be a communist one. Then, at eight years of age, I heard the news that space had been invaded by them. The Soviets had launched Sputnik, the first man-made satellite into Earth orbit, October 4th, 1957. We looked up at night and we thought we could see it passing over. It made a 1,400 passes around the orbits around the Earth. I even thought I could hear it beep as it went by. Probably not. Eisenhower, then Kennedy, built NASA, the Atlantis, Atlas Booster, and the Mercury Project. In February 1962, America sent its first human astronaut into manned space travel. But Yuri Gagarin, a Soviet cosmonaut, had beat us there as well. Rocketry was not the only method used to pierce the veil of space. The X-15 aircraft reached the outer edge of the atmosphere, seeing stars in the daytime in the early 1960s. Chuck Yeager was its most famous pilot. The Gemini Project spanned the mid-60s to develop our ability for longer manned space travel. And finally, the Apollo program gave sufficient thrust to send a manned capsule all the way to the moon, to walk around on it on July 20th, 1969, and then lift off to rejoin the mission and return safely to Earth, just as President Kennedy had predicted and promised in 1961. But the last moon mission by the US was only three years later, 1972. We'd made our point, space would not be dominated by a red flag. We actually went to the Space Museum in, uh, in uh, Alabama and saw the, one of these enormous Apollo uh, launch vehicles, this enormous rocket. And you could stand at the business end of this, the, the engine end, these enormous great big uh, cones and stuff, a uh, big launch thing. And then walk along the enormous side, like a like a big submarine, like an atomic submarine, and walk all the way, 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 way out to the other end of it. When it finally narrowed down to this little cone, where human beings would sit in there and say, "Okay, light it off. We're gonna let this thing blow us up into the into space." They did. They sure were brave. While unmanned vessels then began to be sent to Mars, Venus and the giant planets beyond, we began the space shuttle program and Discovery became our first retrievable flying spacecraft. Up it went, then jettisoned its boosters, but flew in space and flew back to Earth. For 31 years, these romantic vessels were sent out and brought back. But the Challenger in 1986 and Columbia in 2003 lost in space tragedies. Nine years ago, the shuttle program, 
was scrapped during the recession. When you do something once and on the first time, it's kind of scary. What if you fail? What if you make a fool of yourself? They might laugh at you. They could coin a name and nickname, call you, reminding you of your shame every time they think of it and tell, call you that. You don't want the negative attention. Better stay home. Do what you've always done. Do what everything else is doing. Don't stand out. But to try something new, untried, undone, never tried before, to go where no one has gone before, well, the Russians had beaten us to space, to manned orbit, to touch down capsules afterward with living people still inside. Before they went, there was a theory, by the way, that a radiation belt around the Earth called the Van Allen radiation belt, with charged electrons in fields at various distances from the Earth, might kill astronauts or mutate them if they go up and get around in that stuff. But the Russians seemed okay when they came back down, so we said, okay, we'll go up too. But the step on the moon, first to do it ever, to go that deep into blank space and to orbit another chunk of rock, dead stone, to see its opposite side, the, 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 the dark side, to find a target basin in one of its many craters, and land a fragile lander with only teaspoons of extra fuel to escape. Well, that had never been done. And one small step for a man became a giant leap for all mankind. We left our footprints on the moon and the Russians had to do it after us. We showed them the way. Fisherman Peter with his partners two brothers, had a pretty good living fishing for tilapia that were found in abundance in the Sea of Galilee. This sea is less than half the size of Lake Tahoe, by the way, about 13 miles across. But it was a world of water to the fishermen who could be lost in a storm. As you know, we could drown in two feet of water, so it's 140 foot depth. It was death to those who could not swim. Galilee is the lowest freshwater lake in the world. It's 600 feet below sea level. The Dead Sea, of course, is lower. And here Jesus came to preach on the deck of Peter's boat one bright mid-morning. He spoke of life. He sketched out a kingdom where God reigns in the hearts of people and love conquers all. He spoke of seeds, weeds, and lost sheep, his calm voice, steady hands, keen gaze, and loving demeanor calmed the quaking heart of Peter, who had heard of him, but was never so near to the one that some were now calling the Savior. He was honored to be chosen to make his fishing vessel the pulpit for the one from Nazareth. The teaching was finished. Jesus looked over at Peter, measuring him up with a steady gaze, estimating him, considering the elements, the calm, bright noon sunshine, a time when night fishers napped in the shade. And he made up his mind. Launch out into the deep, Peter. Let's go fishing. We'll drop your nets, if that's all right with you. Now, all of Peter's experience told against this. No one fishes at noon. And besides, the fish were elsewhere, not even around here. Master, Peter began to remind this carpenter's son. My partners and I have just spent the night right out there with not a single fish to show for it. Then Peter felt just a little ashamed. It was bad Middle Eastern manners to refuse a favor that's asked of you. It was also disrespectful toward a man who had used his own boat as a stage and had spoken so eloquently from it. So Peter acquiesced. But anyway, seeing that you've asked, I will cast the net out right out there for you. Peter felt then that he was once again master of his own affairs and the king of the fishermen. He would do it if even to show proof that 
He was the true fish master between them. So Peter lifted anchor, trimmed his sail, pushed his pole against the soft lake bottom to get out from shore, making headway toward the deeper water, marked by a sharp transition from mossy light green to dark deep blue. They got well away from shore before Peter began to feed his funnel-shaped net into the water. Jesus took up one side of the net and helped him lower it behind them. Peter loved sailing. To feel the wind take your sail and propel your little craft through waves, gaining speed across the top of the waters, well, it was a thrill he would never outgrow. The fishing was work, but moving like this. Wait a minute, they slowed quite suddenly. Something was caught on the net. They had perhaps snagged a fallen tree or a huge boulder beneath the surface. This could be trouble. They might lose all or at least part of this valuable net. Peter began to haul it in. As the net surfaced, a great wonder was shown to him. Not a snag, but a thousand fish. No meager catch, but a catch of a lifetime. He began pulling for his life as fish innumerable cascaded over the rail into the boat. Fish jumping, flapping, spinning in air, came dozens at one pole. Jesus helped him, and Pete, Peter began to laugh. <laughs> you never caught fish at midday. The fish are all in the bottom then, sleeping or bottom feeding. There were no fish in this neighborhood. At least they weren't there last night. What was happening? The boat began to lower in the water under the weight, and the lake began to lap over its sides. So Peter called to shore, James, John, come out here. We can't get them all in this boat. After a moment's confusion, his partners understood and brought their boat alongside. Together they pitched fish into both vessels until they were all getting dangerously full. Nothing like this ever happened. These were indeed deep waters. All Peter knew today was that his fishing days were over. They were if he hung around this man. The world was standing on its tail like one of these fish in its death dance. And the essence of who Peter was, a fisherman, was just altered drastically. And the one who knew all about it, who had called for such a miracle, for indeed, None but God could manifest such a huge signature made from fins and scales and gaping fish mouths. This is me, God. This one was in Peter's boat, smiling at him as the weight of it all became apparent and came down on Peter. Peter realized he, I, he was not just a fisherman. He was human, and all humans are flawed. Peter's flaws stood out in stark relief as he viewed the savior of the world at the other end of his boat. His boat, it wasn't his anymore. The master had commanded this voyage, this fishing expedition, this great catch. Things were changing too fast. Peter flung himself down into the flooded boat filled with fishy water. And he cried out, you must leave me now, Lord. You don't know what a sinful man I am. He wept to say it, but he was undone. Don't be afraid, Simon. From now on, by my side, you will be catching men. People are to be your catch, my friend. And these two also will join us. Peter would write later, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. And who is he that will harm you? If you be followers of that which is good. And if you suffer for righteousness sake, be happy. Don't be afraid, neither be troubled, but cherish and worship the Lord God in your hearts. That same fisherman would place his foot on the same stormy Sea of Galilee's surface one night. And for a moment, he would walk on water. 1940 years later, 
astronaut Neil Armstrong would place his booted foot on the surface of the moon's sea of tranquility. With those famous words, one small step. And at the same time, and inside the lunar vehicle, his partner, Buzz Aldrin, took a small wafer of bread, a tiny sip of wine, and held a communion service on the moon, the first religious service ever on another world. Launch out into the deep. Do not be afraid. Life is all about our adventures. So be of good courage and believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Sing a duck solid. Blessed sacrament is offered this day in the name of God. Please remember in your prayers the sick, the aged, the suffering of our fellow parishioners, our families, and friends. Praying especially for Tracy, Harrison, Laura, Betty, Estelle, Rick, David, Carrie, Stephanie, Danielle, Marion, Jerry, Karen, Ava, Donna, Joy, Janet, Jonathan, Frank, Stephanie, Craig, Earl, Susan, and Belinda. Pray as well for the dying here, especially for Anne, Faith. We pray for those who are lost, especially all atheists and prodigals, for Joshua, Mark, Sasha, Liz, Keith, Cheryl, Katie, Heidi, Bijan, Heather, James, Dana, Megan, Gary, Pauly, Mikhail, and for all terrorists to turn back from their lost purpose to the truth of God. We pray for God's guidance for Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, and we pray with special intentions for Jamal and his family, Louie and Bruce, Randy and his family, David and Jesse, Stacy and her family. 
And for the Go East Cafe, the Korean Seventh-day and Sovereign Joy churches that are all here in our building with us, we pray a special God's blessing on them all. Pray for the firefighters and peace officers and the emergency medical techs that are going out and facing dangerous situations in our name and uh, that they may return home safely every day and bless their families. We pray for America's return to Christ, for our Iran mission out from this church to the country of Iran and the Persians everywhere. Uh, this ministry is going out right now in its eighth season. We pray for Women's Resource Clinic, for the Synod in 2020 in September, and for all of God's purposes done in us and through us as he wills. We pray as well for those in armed service, especially for Ed, Ed Gavin, Christina, and Douglas, for all travelers, for our children and our youth, especially those of St. Augustine's, the province of Christ the King. With travelers, keep in your prayers, um, Bishop uh, Ashman and his, wife, and his uh, daughter, Erin, who are going to be traveling from Reading down to L.A. this afternoon. Pray also for those with birthdays. Are there birthdays in the house? I have none on my list. Bob Sharkey, yeah, that's right, last week. My brother-in-law, who's always 10 years older than I am, I can't catch up with him, that's probably good, uh, but he's a great guy. I just spent a couple of days with him. Uh, so Bob Sharkey gets a, gets a birthday blessing. Anybody else? So watch over thy child, Bob, O oh Lord. As his days increase, bless and guide him wherever he may be, keeping him unspotted from the world. Strengthen him when he stands, comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful, raise him up if he fall, and in his heart may thy peace which passeth all understanding abide all the days of his life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray for those in Christian marriage. Are there any anniversaries to bless at this time? Okay. We give thanksgiving to God oh, for so many things and for uh, the miraculous things he will meet us with if we are a little courageous and walk out and do something for the first time. And that's that's always a blessing. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by the Holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We come to beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer in thy divine hands. We seek to thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in God we love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, our Heavenly Father, to our bishops, all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, and Donald, our Bishop, and other ministers, especially Brian and David, the deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth that true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer the holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me come, and do reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness. All the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee, thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, part of this life by faith and fear. We seek to thee to grant them continual growth by love and service, and to give us grace to so to follow their good examples. That with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. This, O Father, for Jesus Christ, is our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge all men, we acknowledge that we wail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. 
my thought were in thee against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our students. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here are the comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail, and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that the end of all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, and this is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, that if any man sin, we have an advocate, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is appreciation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Be To our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet right in our ground and duty that we should all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, the everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, but 
This is the blood of my. This is my. This is the blood by my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of our dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, be that humble servants, do celebrate and make cure before the divine majesty. With these I will give to be now offered with you. The memorial that Son had commanded us to make, having remembrance of his blessed passion and precious gift, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, God save and bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine. That we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, his holy institution, in remembrance of the death and passion, may be partaken of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy Father and goodness mercifully to accept this our deep sacrament. Our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we are and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseech thee that we and all of us who shall be partakers of this. Holy Communion, worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. May one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant place of refreshment, life, and of peace. And although we are unworthy for a manifold sin to offer to thee any sacrifice, if we beseech thee to accept this our down and do thee in service, not weighing our merits and pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor, glory be unto thee. Father Almighty, we're with the
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls to walk in his That we may evermore dwell in him and in us. Take us to wear the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Once saying have I desired of the Lord, which I will require, even that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
love it, but somehow Savior Jesus Christ. Just to show us thereby that favor and goodness towards us. And that we are very better than the culprit and the miserable body of our son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. But also heirs through hope of the everlasting kingdom. By the merits of his most precious death and passion. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us in thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory for without end. Amen. Let's pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the mysteries which we have received may, by their virtue, purify and protect us through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost. God, the world, the power, and Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. 489. Thank you.